Hey everybody, it's Dylan Borland here, founder of The Borland Group, and as you can see, I'm coming to you from more of a natural type of approach um, here at my office in Livonia, and we are gonna be shooting this from a desk cam this time. So uh, I'm going to continue with our four-part series, Buy, Find, Sell, well actually it's Find, Buy, Sell, and this is gonna be part two of that series, and this is how to evaluate the properties. If you guys remember last week, we did how to find the properties. Uh, today we're gonna talk about how to evaluate the properties. Uh, part three will be the renovation process, and then part four will be the sale and closing. So uh, I'm gonna kind of break this down today into several stages. Uh, there's gonna be stage one, which is the initial walkthrough of the property. Stage two, looking at the comparables, and stage three, plugging in the numbers. So, um, Let's take a step backwards and we'll talk about evaluating property. So I'm a big believer in the more due diligence you do in the very beginning stages, uh, the better chance you're gonna have at succeeding and actually winning and making some money. Um, a lot of investors wanna try to blow through properties quickly uh, and not take their time to look at the numbers, uh, do the proper comparables, and actually uh, evaluate the property and the renovation that needs to take place uh, as well. A lot of people are so anxious just to do a deal that they're really kind of ignoring a lot of the principles uh, from the very beginning that they needed to be taken into account. So. Um, there's an old saying, and I don't know who said this, I think it was probably, if I'm not mistaken, Warren Buffett. Um, could be, maybe it was Mark Cuban, one of the two. Um, but they said, you know, I became successful because I said no to 99 out of 100 opportunities that were presented to me. And I use that philosophy in my life as well. Um, and in this business, uh, you're gonna find that this is absolutely a business where uh, you're gonna have to say no to 99 out of 100 properties, okay? So you're gonna have to set some very specific goals, some very specific criteria, what you're looking for. Uh, we're gonna cover some of the criteria that I use here in this video. Um, so let's jump into it. So step one is the initial walkthrough. Um, when you're doing the initial walkthrough of the property, you've got to start with your end vision first. So how do you expect this property to look? What's your end goal? So are you an investor who kind of does the cheap renovation, um, where you're buying the cheapest materials, using the cheapest labor, you don't really have a good quality end product? Are you an investor who likes to scrap everything in the house and start completely over. You redo all the bathrooms and kitchens and floors and carpets and fixtures. Uh, everything's brand new. Or are you an investor who uses a hybrid approach? And we use oftentimes a hybrid, hybrid approach where uh, you are actually salvaging some of what's left in the property. Um, there may be good floors in place. Uh, some of the bathroom tile may still be good to reuse. And we swap out things like vanities and fixtures and door hinges and lights and that type of stuff. Um, but in order to properly evaluate a property when you first walk through it, you have to know what is your vision for the end product. So as you're walking through the house, you can start to take notes as to what you're gonna be doing and what that's gonna cost. Um, I personally like to take uh, notes for each individual room. Um, so meaning I'll be standing in the living room and I'll look at it and say, okay, we need to do the lights in this living room, we need to refinish the floors, we need to do the paint, what's the cost for that? Then I'll go to the kitchen and I'll say, we need to do the cabinets, we need to do the fixtures, the faucets, the flooring, again, the lighting, and what's the cost gonna be for that? So I kind of piece my cost uh, for the properties together uh, by each room individually. So um, some of the common missed um, costly mistakes that a lot of investors overlook, uh, and I'm just gonna go through a list here, is uh, it has the electrical been updated? Or is it still running on the old fuse boxes, which a lot of houses in Michigan still have? Uh, has the plumbing been updated? If you're in Michigan and it has galvanized plumbing, um, that's a problem. If you don't know anything about galvanized plumbing, you should look into it. So uh, whenever we see a house that has galvanized plumbing, we automatically plan to replumb the house. Um, how many years are left on the roof? How old is the furnace and the hot water tank? Do they need to be replaced? Uh, did you thoroughly check the foundation of the property? Have you considered the cost of city permits and inspection? Do the windows need updating? Are there any major cracks in the driveway or concrete outside that may be an issue for a buyer when it comes to financing? 
So again, when evaluating a property, you always want to look at the future and the end product. Have the end goal in mind. Um, and you're going to want to pad your renovation budget as well. So you're going to want to put an extra cost in there. If you come up with a cost of $30,000, let's say, for a renovation, add another 10 to 15% on top of that for um, any of the issues that might come up, because there's definitely going to be issues that come up. So step two, looking at the comps or the comparables, comps for short. So uh, a lot of investors make big mistakes here. Um, they don't know how to evaluate what we call the ARV, the after repair value for a house. So, um, and a lot of reasons is because they use inaccurate data sources. Uh, investors are trying to use internet websites such as Zillow, uh, ePraisal, Trulia, uh, when you really should be using the multiple listing service. That's the Realtors database for the most recent sold comparables uh, in the marketplace and it's your most accurate data source. So some things to keep in mind when you're looking for your ARV is you want to be conservative. You want to set and look for a worst case price, a likely price, and a best sales price. Uh, and always base your evaluation off of the worst case price. Uh, when doing a market comparison, uh, only use sold comps. Okay, so don't use comps that are listed, don't use comps that are pending, it's irrelevant. A lot of times properties are listed for 100,000, by the time they get closed out, they actually sold for 90,000. So you want to use only sold comparables and take into account anything like concessions as well. Um, try to stick as close to the property as possible. Uh, we like to start within a quarter mile of the property and go out from there. Uh, never use comparables older than six months old. Um, you want to use comparables with similar features and benefits such as square footage and style. You can't, you guys should all know this, you can't compare a ranch to a bungalow or a property that has 1,800 square feet to a property that has 1,000 square feet, okay? Um, if there are not three clear comparables, you're probably going to want to pass on that particular property. Okay, again, this depends on your area. We are in a uh, populated metropolitan uh, area here in the metro Detroit, and there are definitely three comparables for most of the properties we purchase. Uh, if we go a little bit further out into rural areas, um, which we don't particularly invest in because it's harder to resell, you're not going to find comps that are close to your property or there may be one or there may be none that have sold recently, okay? So step three, plugging in the numbers. So once you're armed with the renovation cost, we are going to plug in the numbers. So we know the renovation cost, we know the resale cost, now we need to figure out if this is a good investment property. Most investors use what we call a Mayo formula, which is the maximum allowable offer. Um, most investors are going to look at a property like this. They're going to base it on 70% of the value of the house, okay? So it's a 70% rule. If the ARV for a property is $100,000, then I take 100,000 times it by 70%, and then I'm going to reduce from that 70% the anticipated repair. So if I've just evaluated a house, I've looked at it and I said, um, the ARV is $100,000, and he's $20,000 in repair. So 100,000 times 70% is $70,000. Minus 20,000 in repairs brings us down to 50,000. Meaning, I have to purchase this house as an investor for $50,000. That's gonna be my offer to the homeowner. Some investors will go above 70% Mayo. Um, we don't, we usually stick at 70% or below or in some very rare scenarios, uh, if there's a higher value on the property, we'll go up to 75% um, Mayo as well. Uh, and the reason for that is because you have to pad this, right? You have to have a return on your capital. You have to take into account that there's gonna be costs for the resale of the property, mm -hmm. such as real estate commissions, there's gonna be title work, there's gonna be taxes, water bills, and then if you are using any financing or hard money, you have to take into account uh, what that's going to cost you as well over the length of this project. So um, you never really want to buy a property above that Mayo formula. Um, so that's why it's important to have your numbers solid up front 
what do you think the house is going to sell for and what's your renovation going to be so you can make a smart uh, decision when you're buying property okay so remember again and i'm going to stress a lot of investors forget about the cost of reselling a house right so you're going to have typically six percent real estate commission in most markets you're going to have your title work cost your closing costs your taxes uh, most markets there's proration of taxes um, so keep those things in mind because I've seen a lot of people buy a property and not realize uh, they have to subtract those costs and end up bringing a check to closing um, that is not good for anybody okay so those are some of my ideas again I know that this is kind of a quick synopsis of how to evaluate the properties um, for more details, you can always reach out to us on our blog, which is michiganrealestateinvesting.info, and you can always contact me directly. We do offer a um, free real estate coaching consultation. Uh, you can call us, and we will help you more on an individual basis. Um, and next week, we are going to be diving into, let me take a look here, part three of this series, um, the renovation process. So. Happy investing. We'll see everybody in two more weeks.